Calling you a radical. 22 years ago, I was teaching. I was a student professor. We had a brand new MBA program right there, the number one school business in the United States. Clyde Cooley just recently passed away, a mad cow. And I walked out, and this is the day before the election. We were saying had a radio, a television station then. And I walked out, and they were doing interviews right here, and they're, Professor Blanche, would you do an interview with this? Yeah. And they interviewed me, and they says, well, what you think who's going to win the election? And I says, well, you know, we do the PPI and the CPI number, the inflation numbers, and here, I'm the guy that did them. And I says, there's absolutely zero inflation. The deficit, we have a surplus. The debt is being paid down. We finally have our fiscal house in order. These economic times, the prosperity, there's so much good happening in this country right now. You know, 1999, 2000, that they're not going to change. Gore will win. They're showing Bush is up by 1%. Don't matter. There's, like again, I said, there's no inflation. By the way, Gore did win. One television station, Operation Fox Con News, wanted by Jetstream. To, I'm like, 30 networks announced that Lay Down Gore is one. So I'm teaching here, and this whole thing is playing out. Fox News comes out and says, no, now think about it. Fox News run out of the House of Windsor? What? Rupert Murdoch can control United States election? There's heavy, heavy implications, including Supreme Court nominees. Now, all these years later, we're having all this debate on abortion and all these different things through the Supreme Court. Who you think that Lay Down Gore was going to name Alito or Roberts to the United States Supreme Court? I don't think so. Do you think we would have invaded Iraq? So Bush gives that infamous speech yesterday. And the thing that's irony about that speech is not just the Freudian slip he makes about one man's decision to invade Iraq. And he says, oh, I'm 75. It's how he goes, leads up to it. You watch the whole thing. He goes on his dissertation about there's no checks and balances. <laughs> how did he become president of the United States with no checks and balances? The United States Supreme Court. How many, I mean, I feel like I've been gut shot. I walked right out here. I'm like, no, this can't happen. This can't happen. They're actually going to steal the United States election. League of Women Voters, everybody goes in. The Supreme Court didn't rule that Bush won. The Supreme Court ruled illegitimately that they didn't have time to count. Now, you read Judges Byers' dissent. I always go back to that photograph of Byers walking out, uh, coming out of the, when the vote, and he's like, look, shell-shocked. You remember in Florida, the little behind the curtain. I mean, the way the whole thing played out was so surreal. I mean, and I knew right then, we're done. <laughs> you think we would have invaded? If that election wanted to show, you think we'd invaded Iraq? So this whole century, that's when this nightmare started. It's the greatest fraud in, well, it's the greatest event in United States history. It's bigger than D-Day, bigger than June 6, 1968. I shook Bobby Kennedy's hand right here. Not long before that, until Fukushima happened. But look at Fukushima, the way they covered that up. Where's your soup can? So, what a 22 years it's been. I can't believe the way it's played out, to be honest with you. The implications. Remember, we had our fiscal house in order. The debt was going to be paid off by 2005. Then what happened? 9 11. The gift that just keeps on giving. Then what happened? 311. Talk about the